Welcome to Future Buys. So this is, uh, my name is Gabriele Corcos. So this is uh, a new podcast that we record out of Penn Plaza in New York City. We are in the studios of uh, Cumulus Media. And this is a whole new project. I am uh, truly, truly excited as, uh, as life uh, evolves and I grow older and I discover things that make me passionate, in this case, uh, technology and, and storytelling and how it all is uh, evolving and changing my profession. I, I am adapting a lot these days. It's something that we all have to do. Um, to a degree, is a, a somewhat of an exercise for me and also a learning curve. That's why I'm uh, incredibly grateful of this uh, first group of talented individuals that joined me, uh, because there is a lot to learn. There is a lot to learn. There is a lot to discuss. Uh, and I'm also extremely curious. I am... Uh, I do believe that knowledge has to stem from curiosity, so all the things that tickle me and make me feel I want to know more, to me, just an excuse to enrich myself. So I hope that you, uh, in the audience, or you at home, or you just listening to the podcast, uh, will get the same benefit that I hope to get from this kind of conversations. We're doing it for you, I'm doing it for me, I'm doing it for them. Um, the uh, main exercise in all this is to... Uh, uh, assist to the change of the way that we are communicating in general, but obviously more focus on the kitchen because that's where I come from. Uh, I was able to build my brand uh, because of the great heritage that my land has. So it was a given. I, arri I arrived in the United States not knowing what I was going to do with my life. When I realized that people didn't know in Los Angeles how to cook Italian food, I decided that maybe that was going to be uh, my path. And it worked. It worked. Uh, until the moment in which I discovered that uh, storytelling can be enhanced, it can change, um, it can evolve. So today we're here to talk about the future of storytelling in the kitchen, from uh, the simple storytelling and how certain content can be delivered, but also the marketing and how we build commerce, how we merge audiences together. Uh, I will definitely interject the conversation and talk a little more, but I would like to introduce you to my guests. Uh, I'm not reading anything, so I would like them to introduce themselves. So we start with uh, Samantha Wolf, which I was uh, super happy to meet at South by Southwest last year, and now I'm emailing her every other day, I hope. Well, I'm texting you, too, yeah. so it sort of it works out <laughs> very good. well. Uh, so I'm Sam Wolf. I am a... I, the founder of Pitch4, we're a marketing and branding consulting agency. We work with VR and AR companies to market and brand themselves, but also with agencies and brands to partner um, with VR and AR companies to integrate it into what they're doing. Okay. Basically trying to market the most immersive, coolest, newest stuff out there. Since, uh, since it's our first episode, and I'm sure that certain things will come out and will be explained better, do we want to just uh, hint at the difference between AR, VR, XR, all these names that we're throwing out there? Yeah, I mean, I also, I, I wrote a book called Marketing New Realities, which was to uh, get people within marketing and branding to understand VR and AR and immersive technologies, because... The technology itself might be complicated, but the use of it, is, once you have some of those words, is yeah, not necessarily. Not. Uh, so VR, VR is basically, it's virtual reality. You put on a headset, you go into an entirely new world. Uh, you can either have the agency to move around that world, or sometimes it's more like a 360 video where you can just look around. Okay. Augmented reality is a little bit more like the sort of the Snapchat, the IKEA app, where you can overlay graphics into the real world. So uh, that is about to change everybody's lives um, more than VR, because it, I mean, pretty much all cell phones now or all I mobile phones can agree. can use it and give you information. MR is a word that Microsoft started, which is called mixed reality, which is a little bit more with uh, is more of a wearable sort of an, what they call HMD, yeah. why not? a head-mounted head display, <laughs> as opposed to saying like yeah. glasses or <laughs> goggles man. or whatever. <laughs> and and with that, it becomes a little bit more. It's almost the in between where it's an augmented reality situation, graphics over the real world, but now you can interact with them a bit more. Um, 
people outside of the industry seem to think that they're very, very different. Mm -hmm. They're actually made in a very similar way. To me, they're and all so extension they're all of the same the world. Same. It's yeah. all, and, and eventually they're all going to just sort of combine into one thing. And that's why people are gravitating towards the term XR, which basically means across yeah. sort of X reality. Yeah. Uh, it also gives you the ability to choose and not fall into a niche. Yeah. Yeah. Or kind and of like so feel, it's, feel, yeah, you know. I mean, I think that there's been. Um, push towards VR, there's been push towards AR, and then I think there are a lot of people um, within the industry who just sort of shake their head and they're like, it's <laughs> all it's sort of the same, it's just, but it's all fun. And this is what has been happening the past, uh, I would say, at least in my life, the past couple of years, nothing more than that. But when I started, when I started, I had the honor of meeting Susie Fogelson, who was running the marketing department of Food Network. So this is uh, Susie, who opened a, a company with uh, Gary Nelson. You're doing marketing as well. So would you like to introduce yourself for the audience? Sure. Um, my name is Susie Fogelson, uh, as Gabrielli said. And um, I was at Food Network for many, many moons, uh, running marketing and strategy, and left about two years ago to start F & Co. And F & Co is basically a food strategy and storytelling agency. So it's helping brands connect with food culture, mm -hmm. um, helping brands connect with what we call the food connected consumer. Um, and that can be uh, within technology, it can be within um, product innovation, it can be within social media, it sort of runs the gamut. So um, I'm the insights and ideas, and Gary is creative strategy. Uh, yeah, I'm Gary. Nice to meet you, Gary. All righty. Um, I'm a career ad guy. So I went into, I was an agency guy right out of college. Mm -hmm. And when I started, I was an account guy, and I did that for about three years. Account work is not the work you want to be doing in advertising. You're, sh you're sort of schmoozing, and you're just a, a sort of the yes man that you see in a stereotypical sort of advertising piece. Um, I quit that and went into creative um, about three years after, and that's when I didn't look back. I got my first copywriting gig. You quickly realize that co the copywriters are sort of strategists as well. Yeah. And I was writing banners for like Wonderman, and they were, you know, they were animated GIF banners in the digital space when people were just starting to spend money on digital, and, and the TV guys were like, no, that's never going to go anywhere. And, and we started to, you know, sort of sneak more money out of these ad budgets to, to really spend, to spend, have people spend money in digital. Um, so I did that for quite a while, and you know, many clients and and a few agencies, and eventually I got the bug to sort of go past creative and really dive deeper into strategy. Okay. And so I spent, some, I spent a few years um, working media strategy because really what you want to do is influence the creative, influence where it's going um, to tell the best story. Um, and we'll, we can get into you know, the, the storytelling part of this. I yep. mean, it's a word we've been using in advertising since the beginning of advertising. Um, where it's going is, is really interesting. I, I, I find uh, the, the process... Uh incredibly enticing because I, I, I used to be a musician. I come from the radio world. So it all started just with, with voice and music with no visual. And I lived uh, the same kind of change that I see happening now when YouTube came out. I, I created my show. I posted it on YouTube. And then, you know, I was lucky enough to, you know, have a wife who's known <laughs> who helped me get it together. But uh, that there was the same sentiment about a decade ago when YouTube came around saying, is this going to be the new way? Is this going to change the landscape? Uh, how creators are going to do that and how marketers are going to embrace it? And now I'm feeling like I'm jumping back another 10 years. Like the, it is a cycle that I wonder when I'll get older in terms of like, oh, I don't want to learn that. Sometimes I think of my, you know, my dad used to say, uh-uh, I've learned the things that I wanted to learn. My life is great. I'm not satisfied just yet. And one, you know, I would say the main conversation that I really would like to hear is between you guys. Uh, how, like, let's start from Susie. From when you started a Food Network and the way that those stories were told, uh, how you're moving forward into adapting those stories uh, to the new digital era and how in the marketing space people like Sam can offer an insight or, or kind of like show you the way. Are you showing the way people these days? Are we at the, at the point where... You know, we, we need to know. Sorry, two questions at the same time. <laughs> Susie and I know each other. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, go, go ahead. You, Susie, start. I was just thinking, you know, when I started at Food Network, which Food Network is 24. So right. I was there uh, for many, many years and watched it evolve. And I'd say that um, one of the most interesting distinctions to marketing food now is 
no pun intended, the stories. I actually think that um, cooking was so novel that it was basically explaining a recipe. It was enough. Was enough. Yeah. And now the people, people, food connected consumers want the story behind the food. They want to know who made it, where it's from, um, how it got here, was it uh, treated well. Um, they want to know stories behind ingredients. They want to know stories behind people. And I don't just mean, you know, um, kind of cooking 2.0. I mean, deep stories um, and background on food is a great content marketing strategy. Yeah. And I think it was super more superficial when Food Network started um, and has evolved for the better. Yes, I do agree. I think that actually the attention has been shifting a little bit from the celebrity chef to the real people that cook at home. Like I've seen influencers. again the rise of you know influencers and bloggers and people that are doing what we did 10 years ago when we started because there is that sense of uh, affiliation with somebody that you know it's relatable. It's just a regular person that is at home as opposed to being you know one of the top guys on, on a network that ultimately, and I've discovered when I was there, it's TV. You're getting paid to deliver a message and sometimes the message has to be shaped in a form that is acceptable to your employer or acceptable to the audience or, or targeted somehow. How is it changing for you now? You know, not thinking about the food, but if you, let's throw you in the kitchen. The, the, the storytelling of a traditional show, how do you see it evolving with the mediums that we have uh, available? If you were to look for, okay, if you, were to, if you were to look for a show, if you were to look for a recipe, what would you be these days your preferred medium or what would you suggest a client like this is your best engagement, this is your best shot at telling a story that is compelling these days? Well, for me, I look at Mark Bittman and Enoch Garden and sort of go from there. If it's for a brand <laughs> and, uh, and trying to tell a compelling story, I mean, I think it all comes down to the user experience and within VR and AR and the marketing of that, there is a lot of talk about storytelling in general, but they're, they're really talking about storytelling within, within the headset, sort of not just sit there and sort of have experience, but understand where you're taking the consumer to go. Um, there haven't really been, as far as I know, anything that's super cooking or kitchen related, and I think there's a real opportunity. You and I have no, talked no, about yeah, that before. That, that I really... Um, well, on one side, I'm completely lost. On the other side, it's like terribly exciting because like every you can do everything. Well, a lot of the creators out there and 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 the industry itself is trying to fix that. Um, but a lot of the creators out there tend to be uh, sort of give it to use old marketing terms like a uh, adults well, men tw eighteen to thirty four mm -hmm. and sort of coders usually white and and so they're creating the most of the content. So they're not sort of, me from the TV background, I go, wait a second, you can't create, well, you can create one network that's maybe more, you know, skewing white men, 18 to 34, but that's not an entire platform. There's no. so much more of an opportunity. So there is the opportunity for creating food content and stories. There is the opportunity for creating comedy, for creating um, many, many other demographics worth of content. Well, actually, that gives me an idea for a question for you. When we used to be younger and we all sat in front of the TV, there was one medium that conveyed the message. You could agree, you could disagree, but we were all together around the TV. I mean, I grew up, I had a color TV, but I remember it was eight channels, and in order to change a channel, I used my grandmother's cane, because we had no remote control. Now we have so many opportunities to distribute our mediums and our content that it might become alienating to certain demographic, because you know you have somebody that is using their phone, somebody that prefers the tablet. Like, I am not a tablet guy. For instance, I don't watch shows on tablet. I like good speakers or good headphones. I travel. I like my keyboard. So this, to me, creates a little bit of an issue, especially in the generational gap. Because how do I explain my mother that still is trying to figure out, and mind you, I left almost 20 years ago, how to use a Skype. I'm like, mom, like really. <laughs> uh, but she's still very active in the kitchen. She still could be a target of mine. I am at a point where how do I craft a message that is uh, forward, that is new, but is uh, able to speak to her, but also to the 23-year-old that does take up for the most part. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a huge issue, the generational issue. Um, 
and I feel like there are a couple questions in there, so I'll try to address them all. Yeah, I mean, you're right. When you have one medium and you have television and you, everyone is captive in front of the television, you know, there's a, that's the only game in town and that's, what, that's where you go and that's where advertisers are going to spend money. Okay, not every, everything is flattened out that you just mentioned, right? So, and everything is spread. And what we, there's a term we used to use for this when you were thinking about marketing something in this sort of environment. It's, you know, you would call it 360, but in terms of the story, it, it's, it's sort of story building or story scaping, which is to say, you don't put the same content everywhere. We, you don't put the same videos everywhere where you can put videos. On television, that's gonna call for a certain type of content. In the digital space, it's gonna call for a different type of, type of content that takes into account um, the user that, you ha that, that, that you're trying to engage with, um, and so on and so forth. The, the okay. right things in the social space, the right things in the image, static image space, but altogether these things should build to one story, one conceptual platform that, it, that gives a brand away. Now, how are you gonna get your mom to, to engage with, with AR? You might not, I know. okay? You might not, but if the story's being told properly, your mom is somewhere on this spectrum of, of you know, of, of the build. Somewhere in the 360 land of television, podcast, you know, she's surfing online somewhere. She maybe has a Facebook account, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, does she? No. Uh, okay. No. All right, she's never using AR. <laughs> <laughs> but if the story's... Well, I would disagree with yeah, you on that. Yeah, but look at Facebook. Like, my, my kids, uh, 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 12 and 16, to them, is non-existent. It will never be a useful tool to them. They're already, and that's why like, I spent the past five years focusing on Facebook, building my pages, and, and I have all my likes. I'm all proud of it, and that's a certain kind of engagement. Then I get my report, your audience of women, 45 and up, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I was like, where's the kids? Well, there's most of the, I mean, it's most of the population. I want it, I want you to, but in terms of the disagreeing with you, there's, um, there's a lot of talk in the community about this AR cloud, which is basically you'll be able to take your phone, so if you... I don't know if you bought your mom an iPhone, but you'll be able no, to... No, but I gave her my old iPad. So. Okay. <laughs> but the idea is that we'll come to, instead of like, oh, I have to... How do I download this app, Gabriella? Like, probably in Italian, but yeah. that's okay. Um, like, how do, I download, how do I do this? That instead, she'll just lift up her phone, and it will happen. Yeah. And in that case, there's it's a frictionless experience. And so if it can identify food, if it can identify, oh, this is a fork, this is this kind of knife, this is that kind of knife, we're not there yet, but... You know, five years from now, we might be when everybody's sort of uploading images of things in its oh, object. Oh, from, from the simple act of pulling out a cell phone in, in the aisle of a grocery store and trying to understand more about the products before you, you purchase. I think that that is an exercise that probably my mom can handle. You I'll know, ask I, her when it's here. I have to say, I absolutely agree with you. I, you know, look, when I say, like, she'll never use it, look, there's always, a, there's, there's always that learning period. And I thought after Pokemon Go, everyone was going to be jumping on the on the AR bandwagon because that was funny that it didn't happen that fast. It huh? just blew up and yep. then it was gone. And so, like, when's the next when's the next thing happening that everyone you hate the, you hate the Pokemon? They did the <laughs> same. Like last week, they just posted a new game that is very similar. It's just dinosaurs. It's just like hunt for dinosaurs. Well, there's a lot of move. There's a lot of oh, that worked. Now I'll do this. And and really with the the Pope. Pokemon team, they do have the majority of the revenue now when it comes to, you know, uh, augmented reality. And I put it in quotes because they, they're, they're both, the experience of Pokemon Go, which most people use, is more sort of GPS based. And then there is now that you can sort of put the little guys in the room, but they're not at the point where they're truly interacting with the room in the way that some of the graphics out there can. So, uh, you know, things are things are changing. I mean, I think I I like the idea that people are using the Snapchat faces and using and and using Pokemon, but I really think we're we're just almost in like a first generation of content. So we're like Food Network with a stand and stir. You know, it's sort of like this is what you do. You put graphics here, and then everybody's like, oh, I'll do that too. I'll copy this. I'll copy this. I'll copy that. You know, it's IKEA put furniture. You can measure furniture, and then so now it's Amazon does it. So everybody is sort of jumping into it, and what I really want is to bring more of the creative minds, with, like you guys, um, into that technology to say, wait a second, we can do menus. so much more. Oh. And that's where I mean, the storytelling the, the, the idea to me that all of a it. sudden, like all of a sudden is like having a kitchen that has expanded 10 times fold, it's, it's insane. Like the amount of, especially because of the amount of communication that, that every product requires or every family brand or every item that you have like all of a sudden these possibilities are gigantic but one of the things that i'm curious like the prospective client 
that approaches you for you know marketing directions or to let's say establish a strategy for their product obviously we talk about food because we i come from the world and you've been in that world so i would like to keep you know an example there but if you have any other example it would work but where is the excitement and where is uh, the fear because i'm sure that there is fear because like trying to raise uh, sponsorships for vr or ar for self-produced show it is still quite an exercise mm -hmm. uh so i would like to hear from you know somebody is in the office waiting or dealing with a client that actually has a you know necessities how do you tackle that well i mean for us um we really start with the trends we say what is happening in the marketplace doesn't sound so original but it is actually our blueprint so um when a, br a brand approaches us we really try to think about what what is happening in food culture that this brand can authentically align with to um to create relevance right and if we know the trends of um, global flavors and multi-sensory and transparency and culinary consciousness. We, we know all of the trends. Not every brand can check those boxes. So what's really important is um, what can the big guys do? What can the c consumer packaged goods guys do um, that the startups can't and vice versa? So right. we just try to take the DNA of that category and make sure that we really align it. And then I guess I'd add that um, a lot of the work that we do happens to be around content, uh, helping develop content strategies, or experiential. So it sort of seems like um, consumers are kind of a contradiction right now. I want it really fast and really easy, right? I want convenience, but then I also want great food experiences. It used to be like a direct commercial, 30 seconds to tell you what you needed. Yeah. These days is that, how can we make you feel better? Do you want to be part of this? It, it, it has to be engaging. It has to, you know. And know me. All yeah. this data and personalization, all this data that brands are collecting on people, make my life better. Yes. Don't, you know, we say, if you're going to cookie me, give me a cookie. Yes. Right? Make my life better. So I don't know if you have anything to add on that. No, not really. I mean, not really. I, I, I think what you, just, <laughs> what you just described is our, it's our way of being consumer first. And I think that if when, when brands are thinking, you know, when they have their sort of consumer shoes on, you know, how can I provide the best experience for, like, like you said, how can I make your life better and sort of prioritize that versus prioritizing something else, like a bottom line or a what have you. I need to move this many units. When, it's, when you're they're really thinking about their, their consumers and, yeah. and what they need in life, it sort of changes the, the, the mindset around the brand. So, you know, when, yeah, I would imagine it's hard right now because a lot of the brand people are still wrapping their heads around something like AR, VR, and XR, which I'm sure many of them haven't even heard yet. They're still thinking about how do I, you know, crack the digital space and really put that to work for me? How do I crack the social space and put that to work for me? They, they're still making television ads. Yeah, I agree. It, to me, it's interesting because on one side, we all criticize this huge collection of data. On the other side, we have to realize that the way that when it's implemented properly, it actually is really efficient. And when I look at it, the food space, to me, uh, being able to, to, to leverage transparency and accountability when it comes to the things that you eat or you feed your kids or what you're bringing into, this is it's opening up to you know the possibility of health discussions and, and understanding the things that you eat more than, yes, you know, look, I have a TV show, I booked a commercial, and this is what I'm selling you. And, uh, it, it, you know, to me, it's really exciting because it, it, it's pointing to the person. And, uh, and, and that goes in every kind of message. Like you, you, you say in your book, you know, regardless of the different ways of you can deliver a message, the person is becoming more important than it used to be. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Like it's not agree. just numbers I mean, and stats. We are people. And I think when you look at it in that way, um, you, what you, as, as, as from a brand perspective, you also get a sense of where I align myself with other brands. So you're a consumer and you, know, you have relationships with many brands. Yeah, you, you know, you're wearing Adidas and you have an Adidas relationship, but Adidas, as we all know, is like they, they collaborate with tons of people right. to, to give you sort of different experiences. When you're a brand that's really thinking about your consumer, you, you think about where you align and the partnerships that you should engage with. And I think that's, that becomes really helpful to the consumer as well. I agree. Sam, uh, do you cook? I make do you pancakes from scratch and muffins from scratch and... And that's about it. And cookies from scratch. And cookies. That's okay. It. Those are the three All right. total. So, that's my entire. All right. So <laughs> let, let's imagine that 
Sam is uh, building a story about the cookies that she makes. Uh, the way that You're I used really to good. prepare my content, uh, there you go. So <laughs> the way that I used to prepare my content, even before I arrived on, on, on TV, I write it down, I test it, take a couple of pictures, uh, and then I either put it on the website, you know, the blogging, the racial blogging, and then eventually it goes on TV and I get distributed like that. If you were to push your recipe and say, okay, so today I am a cook and I want to use a, a new media strategy for my recipe to be spread out across the board, you know, targeting the audience that I want, what would you do? What, what would be your first approach? Assuming that the content is ready, okay? So wh where do you start uh, pushing? See, I never consider myself to be a talent, so it's really hard to flip it. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out the, the well, it could other be, way. You know, like, I, I say food, it can be applied to anything, really. Yeah, no, it's a, I mean, for me, every time I, I keep on hearing everybody here uh, talk about food experiences and interactivity and diving deeper into, like, what is the food, what is the background, where it's from, I keep on remembering um, the time that I went to, do you know Blue Hill Stone Barns and yes. Dan Barber? Yes. So... His experience, it is the most expensive meal that you would probably have, or definitely the one I had. But they end up, you know, taking out the butter and they say, this is from this one cow and this is from this other cow. And this cow, you know, the butter from this cow, they, they're older and they know where the grass is. And, they, and so you can taste the difference between one kind of butter and another kind of butter. It is unbelievable. They show you, they take you into the bakery, they take you whatever. They showed the entire experience. And I feel like that into itself, that whole meal, you're paying... Ugh, too a lot yeah. of money, but um, and then I've watched the Netflix special about Dan Barber, and I'm you know I'm obviously like bow down to him, and he's going, he's taking it all the way back to who's the who's the farmer that works on it, and how do they rotate crops and all that sort of stuff, and I think AR has the potential to be able to to Deliver do the that. Content. I don't think we're nowhere near going this butter, that butter, but but I do think that you it's the ability, to do that, right? But, yeah. So that if if you're if you're taking if I guess I'm making the cookie recipe and I take out my you know the 365 raw sugar or whatever it is, and some of the other materials in the uh, Ghirardelli chocolate chips. I mean, I try to go. Mm -hmm. It's a good good cookie. That maybe it's my AR. Um, will acknowledge that particular uh, sugar or chocolate and then say, okay, well, this is the history. It's made out of these four kinds of chocolates from different parts of the world or who knows where. I'm sure I haven't read the back well enough. <laughs> and then and then it's like, oh, well, do you want to know the farmer that we've partnered with or whatever for the cocoa beans? Do you want to see this? Could you go further and further? And and that hasn't happened yet, but I also think... There's, there's a bunch of winemakers, spectrum, though, that they're doing oh, yeah, it with their wine labels. Further and further yeah. back. Um, well, because if there's, a, if there's a label, it's much easier to recognize yeah. if there's not a, as much. But I, I do think what hasn't happened so much is that... Um, the multi-platform experience, which you were talking about, which I heard somebody say, like transmedia was, I had never heard that term before, I guess this is the new term to use, but you could go through there and say, okay, do you want to know what it's like to see the cocoa beans and see them, see them pick, see them grow, you know, meet some of the farmers, or whatever it might be, okay, go put on your headset, you know, and then it will somehow connect your Show phone you. to your headset, and then and then go and experience it. That that I think is sort of the future of a consumer experience when it comes to food recipes, connecting the kitchen from a from a augmented reality to uh, a more virtual reality experience. Now, whether that's going to drive sales of Sam's chocolate well, chip cookies, <laughs> we don't know. Which but. I would probably get into legal argument because I'm copying somebody's recipe, so <laughs> I am not selling my cookies. But the, uh, but I do think that that if you understand what the brand message is supposed to be from that, if the chocolate company comes to you and say we want to say X, how can we do that in a cross media immersive kind of way? That that would that would probably be that first part of the brainstorm is like, let's try this linearly. And then you bring in somebody, amazing creative director to say, wait a second, okay, that accomplishes this. But if we did it this other way, you get a much more evocative feeling that you're going to remember. The, far, the, the far incredible far part is that. that not only this uh, is uh, advantage, you know, uh, offering solutions to a, a content creator, but from the marketing perspective, uh, to me is a win-win because uh, you have more content to talk about. You, you generate transparency. And you generate 
curiosity. Like I remember being a kid, and this is not really about the, the you know the, the immersive reality, but I remember watching Back to the Future when I was a kid. And there was this line that stuck with me all my life, and I still have it in my head, which is uh, the mother putting the small pizza in the oven and, and him telling his mom, oh, mom, nobody rehydrates pizza like you do, because he just puts the small pizza, push, pushes the button, and it comes out. Certain kind of changes <laughs> ha have been happening, you know, not in terms of like the food, just because I, I come from a farm, so if anything, I want to eat healthy. But I do think that from the marketer perspective, you have so much more to offer now mm -hmm. because your company can truly explain herself, can truly, a company can truly find itself uh, in the messaging as opposed to just crafting a message that, that ends on TV. And that actually will lead me to the, uh, to the next part of the conversation. I humbly believe that all this for the moment, is a still an extension, an extension of the TV. I do not believe that this kind of technology or this kind of storytelling can necessarily survive exclusively on your platform. I like to imagine some sort of ecosystem where a message that is delivered by TV can be experienced in, in an immersive way where you keep on diving deeper and deeper and deeper, and this allows for you know layering of content. Is that something that clients are already asking, or are their clients like more focused on on, on specific technology? Okay, um, I think what you're what you just described is exactly what I was talking about earlier, which is story building. I think all the messages, no matter what sort of communications platform you're on, they show they all need to ladder up to deliver the same sort of essence. So yes, your immersive experience should re be a reflection of the story that you're telling on television. It shouldn't be the same thing, but you should be able to recognize them as being as coming from the same family and having the same sort of heart, I guess, is the word I'm going to use. And in the end, it's video. You know, we're talking about video. Yeah. And um, the TV experience is a great experience. So it's just a matter of making it um, more on demand, uh, more frictionless, and um, making it, you know, um, uh, a rich quality experience. But we're really talking about video as a marketing tool, right? And the ability to tell deep and beautiful stories about brands um, via video. But on that note, I guess what I when you're thinking about 360 and surrounding a consumer and the tech that's coming into the space and how exciting that is. I mean, like I want to, um, I want to be in my kitchen cooking with Bobby Flay. Like right. I want Bobby Flay teaching me his holograms are coming, so yeah. you'll so get that. I, yeah. I'm all for that. I want to see my my menu items come to life on my, on the table yeah. in 3D. So yeah. like I love. We'll, we'll actually have a few guests in a couple of weeks that so they are developing AR enabled menus where you go to a restaurant first time and maybe you're about to spend a lot of money because you're it's a day or something you don't know what's on the menu and all of a sudden the phone can show you the overlay of how it's played it, what it is, how okay. it's brought to you, how many times it's happened that something looks fantastic on paper and then it gets to you and you're like, oh my God, what did I order? Or it's, it's a generic picture. Or is, nice. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's like, right. yes, your eggs look that way, but so do thousands of other restaurants. It's right. not just like how Gab Gabriella wants it plated with this, with that, with this. And you go, oh, that's what I'm going to see. Okay. And you don't have to go to your phone for Instagram to be like, what was here? I go to New York Magazine. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, that and is it's, true. It's nice to not have that stress of looking. All right. Let, let's talk about community building then. Like all of a sudden you have different devices, different uh, platforms for content and in, in a way they all belong to different demographics you have uh, the hyper young that is snapchatting like crazy you have uh, people like me or older that are a little bit more on the facebook instagram this week instagram tv was announced is it bound to become the new uh youtube like to me the kitchen is becoming like a playground all of a sudden because you can choose like on which platform put what and how to do that, how you make sure that you do not dilute your message though? Well, I think, I mean, the whole, it, there's always gonna be different platforms for different messages. It's just trying to understand what the consumer wants. I think one thing, when I, I was at Food Network for a little while and I used to consider it almost like the Food Network generation, the people that have 
you know, they they want e to know everything about food in all directions. They think that they want to be a part of the competition. They want every single detail. And now you get to sort of embody that. If that's what you want, if that's what you're driving, you have the opportunity to do that. Um, how to reach people? I mean, for me, I don't. I even though I'm in sort of the immersive mediums, even though I don't always like that term, but in, in XR, I don't think that's the only one you should use right. by far. I mean, I think the the, the tech industry uh, tends to devalue marketing, um, which I think the technology should be number one, but you have to understand the consumer and their whole experience and well, how it's They're also in, saying that it's killing the publishing. I actually see publishing being able to benefit a lot from all this. Oh, there's, when it when it can recognize, you know, the Lampix or, or, or whatever it may be, on your phone, that if you can recognize what you're reading or what you're seeing, um, it it really is going to change things. And the AR cloud that I mentioned before, and what Google just released in terms of multiplayer um, or multi-person augmented reality experiences, is that let's say um, in this sort of pretend world, you and I are cooking something together. Although you'd just be like, "Get out of here, go and no, you know drink some water." <laughs> but uh, yes, exactly. Set the table. I'll, like, I'll I'm probably still not give it. I'm the either. one that is always cooking. Right. I'll probably be drinking. Yeah. Or so <laughs> you'd be, be like, "Chop that over there." <laughs> but if we were both, let's say, looking at an old old recipe, we could both pick up our phone and see something going on together, and looking at it from different directions, yeah. and that kind of interactive experience that is not just singular um, creates a whole other dynamic to this. I don't know if I answer your question exactly. No, absolutely. But it's, it's, I, 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 do believe, uh, I, I do believe that it is exciting for marketers because, uh, you know, it's not just about delivering the message now. There is a lot of playfulness into it because you are, you are forced to think how this, uh, you know, it's almost like dropping some oil in a pool of water. You need to figure out how it's going to spread out. It's going to stay on the surface, but eventually it's going to keep on spreading and you need to figure out on which shore is going to land and what piece of message. And uh, I, I think it's almost like telling uh, a story from the end. You remember when we were books that you could choose what chapter to move and jump from one, it's you know, one choose land. your adventure. It is right? really it, like a choose your adventure kind but of. But that's why marketers are important in general. And I tend to, within the tech industry, just argue for marketing as something that's really valuable. Because they tend to focus on what the technology does and how much it's going to cost and when it's going to come out and 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 almost that's it uh, that's what i talked about augmented world expos thinking about the entire experience yeah congrats and you're so bouncing that, around talking all these days yes. and we're super proud <laughs> uh, love you it. know well it's it's i have passion for both vr yeah. and air and for marketing and branding and i'm like you two have to come together can you please get along and right. you know, play together a little bit more and so when you talk about the 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 sort of line going out from the drop of the oil in the water that's the fun stuff that's where 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 you get to sort of um, the F and co gets to go, okay, how do we, how do, like, what's the most efficient and effective way that we can sort of swim, swim there? I think that's really interesting. I mean, we're talking about kitchens and, 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 you know, the, the focus of the conversation has been sort of AR, VR, XR, but, you know, you're in Sorry, the I do that. I, I know. <laughs> but you can't have a conversation about tech in the kitchen without talking about what's, go what's going on in kitchens yeah. and with, yeah. with, with the appliances. It's uh, an analog world, yeah. fire and water and, and spices and anything that is tangible and stuff that bleeds, stuff that is alive, was alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but using, I, that's kind of like the way that I felt when I started posting on YouTube. Like all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh. Like, I, I have all this history, and I do have, uh, finally, an outlet. We are about two minutes out. I would like to, first of all, thank you for your time. You. Uh, congratulate you on your success. I would like to leave you with uh, John's one question. What's next and what's exciting? Uh, yeah, Gary, you're shaking your head. I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I'm going to have to defer. What's next and what's exciting? There's, there's so much. In food, what's next, what's exciting in food? I guess what comes to mind for me is um, agricultural tech, yeah. ag tech. Um, I love this idea that companies from the start are focused on the triple bottom line, right? So it's the people, planet, profit. Yeah. And so you have businesses, whether it's Plenty or Aero Farms, who are building vertical farming so that access to fruits and vegetables, or vegetables at this point in time, are available to people that live in food deserts. It can be a profitable business. It can actually benefit the environment. You use less of the resources required and the carbon that ends up uh, seeping into the environment as a result of this type of farming. This, to me, is 
a home run. I, I agree, level. and I actually exciting. see I actually see even blockchain becoming a gigantic part of that it's because true. it will it will be creating accountability from the moment that the seed was planted right. until the moment that that leaf or peach comes into your plate. You'll know where it's gone. Obviously, assuming that everybody maintains proper ethics, because you know it's still a human process of entering data. So certain things uh, can yeah, be just like, you know, once you have there. a token that only circulate digital, maybe it gets easier when it comes to how certain food was sourced or how this animal was raised. But yes, I, I do believe. And, and you as a digital marketer? Yeah, my the, the thing that's blown me away recently has been this idea of uh, the real world web. So which also sort of known as uh, AR cloud and just having many, many people being able to access the same thing at the same time and having technology talk together the internet of things and your phone. And and so for somebody that, that loves immersive experiences, you now have multi-platforms all connecting and that the, the the future that's involved will make things more complicated, but from a consumer standpoint, will make things much more seamless. It, to me, it's exciting because I see a lot of community building into this. It has to be a, a cooperation, a communal effort of people that really care in the beginning. So it, it makes me happy to see that this technology is being embraced by people that actually want to make a change. Like when I grew up and you mentioned technology along with food, it was about preservatives, food coloring, GMO. These days when I think about food and technology, I think about vertical gardening, sustainability. Uh, it's, uh, it makes me hope, it gives me hope. Guys, thank you, thank you so much. You were on the first thank episode you. of awesome. Food Bites. Thank Bite. you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got one in the can. Yes, one in the can. Uh, we'll see you next week and we'll hear you, you'll hear us next week on Future Bites. Thank you so much. <laughs>